This video is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. The U.S. Army recently selected General Dynamics Entrant to the Mobile Protected Firepower Program as its new light tank. This video will provide a brief overview of how the MPF is tentatively intended to fit into future Army units and its combat role. First, the mission. MPF's genesis started in 2013 when the commander of the 82nd Airborne Division, Major General John Nicholson, issued a statement of need for air mobile firepower. The idea of having mobile protective firepower that can be delivered by air, whether airdrop or air land, and get to the fight immediately enables us to retain the initiative we gain by jumping in. Moving at the speed of World War II paratrooper, we're going to rapidly lose the initiative we gain by conducting a strategic or operational joint forcible entry. If we instead get a force on the ground that's mobile and has firepower, we can retain that initiative and achieve decisive results against the enemy. The MPF is intended to provide long-range direct fire support to infantry brigade combat teams. It'll be capable of destroying fortifications, obstacles, structures, personnel, and light armored vehicles. Although light infantry units are currently capable of destroying threats like a machine gun nest, the process is much more deliberate and slower than with an armed and armored vehicle. The MPF will also use its firepower, cross-country mobility, and armor protection to produce a shock effect to close with and destroy the enemy. Shock effect is basically when the concentrated application of violence, often associated with superior firepower and speed, mentally paralyzes the enemy and reduces their ability to resist. In this regard, the MPF's mission is almost identical to the Stryker mobile gun system before its retirement. In 2018, the 82nd Airborne reactivated one of its old Sheridan units, the Alpha Company of 4th Battalion, 68th Armor Regiment, to test the concept with former Marine Corps LAV-25s. Current MPF SOPs were developed as a synthesis of Sheridan and LAV-25 experience, as well as initial testing of the MPF platforms themselves. However, unlike the LAV, M8, AGS, or Sheridan, the MPF is not air droppable. It's air landable, with two tanks fitting a C-17. The Army expects to receive delivery of the first 26 MPFs in December 2023, with the 1st Battalion Headquarters and MPF Company equipped by 2025 at Fort Bragg, the garrison of the 82nd Airborne Division followed by a training company at Fort Benning, where the focus will be on training the trainers and leaders. This will be followed by a National Guard unit and the 173rd Airborne Brigade in 2027, and then the 101st Airborne. A total of 504 MPFs are slated to be delivered by about 2035. Initially, the Army was thinking of one MPF company supporting each infantry BCT. This was pretty much necessary when the force structure was centered on tactically independent BCTs. However, with the planned shift towards larger division-centric operations, they now intend to field a tank battalion at the division level in most airborne, air assault, and light infantry divisions. Battalions can then be split up to reinforce each light infantry brigade. MPF battalions are not going to striker or armored units. There are a few reasons why they're going with a tank battalion at division instead of a company in each brigade. Tactically, you could argue it gives the division commander the flexibility to weight the MPFs towards the main efforts. So hypothetically, instead of spreading them around to every brigade, they could give more to the first echelon brigades, or even hold them in reserve. It also means that the light BCTs don't have to deploy a tank company if they don't need it, since adding armored vehicles will adversely impact strategic air mobility and add logistical burdens. But the bigger issues are maintenance and training. One of the factors that led to the Stryker MGS's demise was poor readiness. At its adoption, the MGS was meant to be dispersed in every rifle company, but it's going to end its service life centralized in the Brigade Cavalry Squadron, a move taken to centralize maintenance and gunnery. When the 82nd ran its tests with the LAV-25, it found that despite being only one of 40 companies in the brigade, that LAVs took up 25% of the brigade XO's time due to maintenance and training demands. Historically, when the US Army employed regimental tank companies and infantry units during Korea, tankers were isolated from armor expertise that tankers and armor units had access to. Brigade MPF companies would present three different 62-man chunks of tankers across the division needing proper training. 
This would both unsustainably stress brigade staffs and likely lead to a lower quality force overall. As a result of these unique challenges, the MPF battalion will have some key differences from normal tank battalions. At the lowest levels, the MPF company will basically be identical to an Abrams tank company. The MPF has four crew members like the Abrams, a commander, gunner, driver, and loader. There'll be 19 kilos armor crewmen. MPF platoons will also have four tanks, more than likely divided into an A section under the platoon leader and a B section under the platoon sergeant. The companies will then have three platoons and a company headquarters that includes two tanks and a small administrative section. The big changes though come with the battalion headquarters. The way in which the battalion is used could change, but currently, it's not intended to maneuver as a tactical fighting force. Basically, it's not meant to function as a whole tank battalion undertaking its independent mission. For this reason, the Battalion HQ will have a smaller S2 shop responsible for intelligence and S6 shop responsible for communications. The S2 becomes mostly oriented towards providing physical security, while the S6 shop focuses mainly on communication equipment maintenance on the platforms and signals infrastructure in the Battalion HQ. The supported infantry brigade will provide more tactical staffs when the MPFs are attached. The emphasis will instead be placed on the S3 shop, responsible for training and gunnery, and the S4 shop, responsible for logistics. In addition, the forward support company of the MPF battalion is designed to provide an even maintenance slice to each MPF company when attaching it to an infantry brigade. This will include variants of the M88 armored recovery vehicle. So aesthetically, the MPF units will look similar to their heavier Abrams counterparts, but they'll have entirely different missions. Unlike the Abrams, the MPF will not be a primary anti-tank capability. For light infantry, these are currently the tow ATGM at the battalion level and dismounted javelins. Ultimately, issues may arise from crew members and leaders treating the MPF like an Abrams due to being operated by the same MOS, or leadership in the supported infantry unit who may have only ever been in light infantry organizations not knowing how to properly employ their attached companies. However, these are issues that can be remedied with proper training. I'd like to thank our patrons for protecting battle order from the whims of the advertisers. Consider joining them at the link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, check out this report on how US Army Abrams units are reinforced for combat. We'll see you over there.